I've had a few requests in the past where people have asked me, how can I set up my network to allow my guests to either use AirPlay or even be able to print from the guest network? In this video, I've taken two devices on my existing network, both a TV and a printer, and I've moved my phone and laptop into a guest network. I then go through step by step how to get the configuration set up so I can use AirPlay and AirPrint across the network. The video is split into two. In the first part, I cover how to do AirPrint and following on the second part, I cover how to do AirPlay. So if you wanna see one or the other, they do kind of link in, so you might wanna watch it all anyway. Let's jump straight to it. I have in front of me my UDM Pro. So first thing I'm gonna do is quickly set the scene for you. So I'm gonna show you what I have set up at the moment. So if we go to settings, if I show you my Wi-Fi network, you can see I have a guest VLAN set up here, a guest network. And if I go to networks, um, you can see in here I have a guest VLAN. So if I quickly go to edit, uh, the name is guest VLAN. If I go to advanced, I have this set up on a different VLAN. Uh, you don't need a domain name. I have device isolation set up because frankly, I don't want my guests talking to anything else inside my network. Um, the rest of it is turned off. Auto scaling is not because we want control over that. Um, and the rest of it, I don't think there's really much else set. We'll come back to, um, so the restriction here, you can see it's restricted to all networks, so you're not gonna be able to get to it. Um, that's that part. And then the other part is the um, in the guest Wi-Fi itself. Um, we've chosen the right network, so we're on the guest VLAN. Um, and again, the rest of it, I think is pretty much standard. So there's nothing else in here. And with profiles, the default one, security, we're using WPA2 default. And that's about it, really. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much my network. I have at the moment, if I show you, I'm connected to the guest network at the moment. And just to show you the IP that I'm getting, you can see my network is set to 172.16.10.222. Um, and on my old network, or my existing network, is a 10.1.1.1 slash 24 range, or .0 slash 24. So what I'm gonna quickly show you now is the device of my, uh, the IP address of my printer. Um, we have a look just here. We have 10.1.1.81. That's everything on my network. So just gonna go back here now and open up terminal. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger for you all to see. Um, and if I try and ping 10.1.1.81, you'll see it's not pingable, getting a request timed out. And just going back to system preferences, if I go back to printers and scanners, and if I was to search for a printer, 10.1.81, uh, 10.81, it's not going to find it. So there's a few settings we need to set in terms of once we're setting this up. So it's quite simple and easy. There's a lot of stuff out there which say you need to mess around with the firewall, open this port, this port. Frankly, it's it's not really that necessary. Um, it is actually just a couple of settings you need to set. So let's close that for now. If we go to settings, so we want to go to networks and we want to look at the guest VLAN. And I brushed over it earlier, um, but I didn't actually do anything with it. It's down here with your restricted access. So what you're doing here is you're restricting all your 192 networks, you're restricting your 172 networks, you're restricting your 10 networks. So it can't actually see anything out there, but what I'm gonna actually populate is the allow authorized access. So we want it to actually go through to this, so 10.1.1.81. And we click apply, and there we go, so that's applied. So I'm actually gonna go back to my terminal now, and if I try and ping that, you can see straight away I'm getting a reply from it. Just gonna quickly show you what ports you can see on it. So this is a tool that I use called Nmap. Um, it's quite popular out there, so we can do a bit quick scan. And you can see it's found these ports down here. So we've got 443, 8080, 80, 631, 8291, 515, and 9, 000, 9, 
and 9100. Okay, so what we've done, just to recap, so we've had our guest network, we've set up a device that we're able to ping from our guest network to our local LAN or IoT network, whichever one you want to have set up. Um, the next thing we're going to try and do is try and find the printer. So if we go back to system preferences and we click add printer, you can see if I search again for this printer, can't find it. So there's just a couple more things we need to enable now. So we've seen that you're still not able to see the printer. So let's go across back to our UDM Pro. So the first thing we want to make sure we have enabled is MDNS. Um, so if we go to advanced settings, if we scroll to advanced gateway settings, you'll see down here uh, we have MDNS. So I already have it enabled, um, but you can enable this basically. Uh, and then what we need to do is go to system settings, no nope, sorry, security, internet threat management. Um, if we scroll down and have a quick look at the firewall walls, there is one that we actually need to add. So there's nothing you would think in and out wise, you would think you'd need to do that just to make sure that it's working, but it's not actually that. So we need to just go to uh, inside the guest and we need to allow something here. So we create new, we're gonna choose guest local. Um, and then we're going to choose and type in MDNS. We're going to apply the rule before. The action is going to be accept. Uh, we change it to UDP. Source is, we leave it as any any. And destination, we can change it to port group. Uh, we're going to keep the IP address group as any, but the port, we're going to create a new group. And we'll call this MDNS. Add the port port 5353 and create the group and apply the changes. So now if we go back to the firewall down here, just to show you the change that I have made, if we go to guest, you can see just here in guest local, uh, that one just there, um, we've basically allowed MDNS through the local network. So that's that done there. And if I go back now to here, and if I go to my printers and scanners and click add, you can see straight away that the printer's popped up and we're able to select it and we just need to click add and it automatically changes it to secure air print. So we click add and that's gonna go off and set up the device for me. I'll show you a quick demo that that's working. I'm just gonna bring up my phone and I'll show you exactly how this works. So you can see here that I am currently connected to my guest network. So I'm just gonna show you on the information. My IP address is 172.16.10.208. So I'm not on the 10 network. So I'm just gonna go across two uh, pages which I have open at the moment. So I've just typed in a few words and I actually wanna to go to print. So at the moment we have one pin printer and you can see it pops up straight away with that. So I can actually go ahead and go, ahead and go off and print that. That's how simple and easy it is for someone to print from a guest network for a printer that's on your local network. Now to do AirPlay is exactly the same process. There isn't too much more that is different, except you would just need to go back to your network, go to clients. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch on my TV downstairs. I can see my IP address for my TV is just here, so 10.1.1.116. Again, you can see it's on my LAN network, so it's somewhere else, it's not on the same, same network. Just before I make any changes, I'm actually gonna show you what it looks like if I try to use AirPlay, and what happens on the screen itself. So let's just quickly take a look at that. So if we now open YouTube, and if we try and go to subscriptions, and we open up a video, and if we try and play this, you can see we click AirPlay and Bluetooth. LG does pop up, but if I try and play this, if we just give it a second, it's basically going to turn. Uh, it's basically going to say that it's not able to play. So we need to make one change after this, and then we should be able to play this on the TV. So you can see the TV in the background, obviously, of this video of the phone as well. You can see it's not working. There you go. So you're unable to play or unable to connect to LG TV. That's fine. So we'll just leave that there. I'm just going to quickly make this one change. 
So you can see that it doesn't play. Um, so it's exactly the same step from here. So we go into, let's just close this out of the way. If we go into networks and we go to guest, you can see down here, if I go down and we add in the IP address of the TV, so 10.1.1.116 and click apply. Uh, bearing in mind, we already have MDNS enabled. Um, we already have the MDNS guest local rule, so that's already in place. And we've just added the IP to the authorization list. We try this again now. So exactly where we were, just to show you, this is still playing in the background. So exactly where we are, we select the device, press LG TV, and there you go. So that's now connected to the TV itself. So let's just turn that down. And there we go. So you're then connected to your guest network, just to show you that again. Uh, still connected to guest and it's still playing in the background via AirPlay. So in just a few simple settings, we're able to get this set up and working so your guests are now able to connect to the network and print and AirPlay to any device. Bear in mind, the devices that you do want to set this up on, you do need to give them a static IP. I didn't run through that in this video, but if it's something you wanna see, it's fairly simple to do and I can show you how to do it. If you found this video useful, again, remember to hit the like button and leave me a comment below if there's anything else you want to see. I do have some Amazon affiliate links below, so feel free to use them. They do help me out in terms of running the channel. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.